Hey guys, it's Cooper Gretsch here from Kick It to Scoops. I am the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. Jack, this Hey Scoops podcast was amazing this week. Thank you. Congratulations, you played yourself. Oh, okay. Someone thinks they're funny. They want to say it's great, and then some other. So, um, get out of my chat. You're blocked. Scoops, who's the best young team out of the eight? Uh, St Kilda. Hey, Liv, I'm so damn proud of you for accomplishing what you've just recently accomplished, being first, this money in the bank, and now being the SmackDown Women's Champion. You're an inspiration to everyone, including myself. Hello, the band group. This is WWE Superstar and still SmackDown Women's Champion, Liv Morgan. And I'm so sorry that you guys are being bullied. I hope that Boots stops bullying you all. Well, jokes on them. I've got plenty of videos from WWE wrestlers, including Liv Morgan, the one they talk about. I don't need to feel to gloat and, you know, share my thoughts on it. It's funny because I've already spoken to her since then and she knows... Cooper Gretsch is an internet sensation. You're a f- vlog? A Facebook icon. If you're watching this, it means you're one of his 39,000 followers. You're irrelevant, you're a piece of sh- The most famous football Facebook page there is, is owned by this man. He lives in Geelong. He goes for St Kilda. He can go f- off. Jaden, get your terminology right before you try and roast me and saying about the Lara Sevens. It's the Lara Fierce. And you're declining that offer? This is pathetic. They're one of the most Ooh. irrelevant pages in Australia. Got lucky off one lame TikTok video. Scoops? Scoops? Scoopsy? Huh? Scoops? <laughs> Who's Scoops? Who's Scoops, guys? Who's Scoops? Who's Scoops? <laughs> Let's start off with that world famous segment. Scoops goes. Bang! 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 You gotta do like that over being blocked? Fake. Shit. Doctor, it's, it's all fake. You're trying to ruin me because you got blocked. You're a blog. You're irrelevant. You're a piece of. You can go off. Get the go off. Am I yelling intentionally? Yes, I am. Too easy, this is. Can he resurrect here with the banana? He's got the goal. I think he should have gone over the top, Dash. But he kicked the banana. With the rise of YouTube, we have witnessed the dawn of a new wave of sports-related media. They're completely independent of the big TV networks and are arguably much higher quality as a result. AFL is no exception to this. We've witnessed several ripper channels cement their spot in the AFL social media landscape. Heck, even the AFL themselves are trying to put out regular quality YouTube content. Keyword trying. We here at Fox Sports thought we'd take a look back at the hardest shots for goal with the game on the line over the past 20 years. In his first year as a Blue, Jack Nunes ensured he'd be immortalised by Blues fans, ignoring the wet and slippery conditions to kick arguably the greatest after the siren goal in AFL history. (laughs) Now obviously quality varies between channels, with some being better than others. However, there is one social media personality that stands out from all the others. One man who has become embroiled in controversy and drama time after time. One man who really wants a cameo video from Liv Morgan. One man who literally sells merch celebrating his notorious habit of blocking anyone and everyone for even the slightest things. That man is Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of the AFL Information Trade Rumors and Results Facebook page. Buckle up buckaroos, because today, We'll be talking about the curious case of Cooper Scoops Gretsch. From humble beginnings. If you're watching this video, you probably know of Cooper. You may have even been blocked or banned by him. But before we can talk about his various controversies and his various uh, quirks, we have to go back to the beginning. Now this handsome lad was exclusively revealed to the world on the 23rd of April 1998. He's currently 24 years old, and since he was a lad, he's had a passion for AFL. He grew up in the footy tragic town of Geelong, and one would expect him to follow the cats, like all the other kids were. But being the revolutionary independent thinker that he is, he decided to hell with that. He was going to forge his own path, in amongst the Geelong sheep. 
And so, he became a passionate and loyal supporter of the St. Kilda Football Club. Sweet Jesus, being a Saints supporter living in Geelong in 2009 would have been brutal. Now from a young age, Cooper already knew he wanted to be a journalist. In fact, it's rumoured that his first word as a baby was EXCLUSIVE when he barged in on his parents engaging in what looked to be very sloppy wrestling. This experience would set into motion another one of his passions in life. Now whilst he was in school, Scoops would become the unofficial source of AFL news, information, trade rumours and results for his classmates. His all-knowing wisdom would inform his classmates of all the happenings in the AFL world. I wouldn't be surprised if Gil McLaughlin himself went to Scoops for tips and advice. Oh great and mighty Scoops, we have tried to grow the game everywhere except Tasmania. We have played games in America, the UK, Japan, and Dubai. Where should we play our next international game? Fuck off to China, go somewhere else. Yes, that's it. Surely hosting two bottom of the ladder teams in smog-filled China will be a brilliant success. It would be this experience that would give Cooper the lightning in a bottle idea of taking his world class knowledge to the world. On September 18th, 2013, the AFL world as we know it would never be the same. On this day, Cooper would burst onto the AFL journalism scene. Some AFL creators will choose YouTube, Twitter, or even TikTok as their platform of choice to spread their good word. However, our visionary hero would once again go against the grain and utilize Facebook as his launching pad for a career in journalism. Now, contrary to what you may believe, Scoops' early work was fairly inoffensive. There were no exclusives, no blocking, no banging of cane corns. No, in his early days, when Scoops was about 15, he did indeed just stick to posting AFL news, information, trade rumours and results. It remained this way for several years. Cooper went about building his brand and reputation, and he even made a documentary on Zane Cordy in beautiful, crisp 140p. Things would be about the same for the next couple years. During this time, he sought out to improve his skills in journalism and video editing, and he took up a TAFE course where he was able to flex his editing muscles. What have you learned this year? Uh, however long I've learned how to edit, and, um put a lot of sporting videos together and uh, had fun with the boys a lot, especially Tim. As well as showing off his athletic ability. Yes, I certainly do. I can uh, bounce a on my leg. Would you like to find out? Yeah, definitely. A nice foreshadowing of what we would experience several years later. However, something would change. We don't know what caused this change, or if it was some act of God, but slowly, Scoops would evolve and begin his transformation into his final form that we know today. And so we enter end game. This is where the story starts to get juicy. Somehow, something changed in Cooper's psyche. All of a sudden, controversial opinion posts are popping up left, right and center. All of a sudden, he was more hostile with his fans, and the sweet, saint-supporting boy from Geelong who wished you a Merry Christmas was no more. Now, we had a man who was hell-bent on reaching the top and taking his rightful place as the greatest AFL journalist of our generation, and by God, he wasn't going to let anyone stand in his way. Cooper wasn't interested in constructive criticism and feedback. No, no, no. He was only interested in success and attention. And when you're chasing your dream, you got to do anything and everything to get there. Even if it involves the complete destruction of your self-image and reputation, commenced by your inability to handle criticism of your opinionated posts and your habit of blocking people rather than having a discussion with them over your differentiating beliefs. This new version of Cooper was no longer afraid to hide his support for his beloved St. Kilda. Now this new divisive style was bound to attract some jealous haters and trolls hell-bent on taking down this new epic rising star in journalism. 
but Cooper was not going to stand for it, and so he began to hit back at the trolls and the haters. And things didn't slow down in 2019 either. Cooper pressed on with his hot takes and professional reporting on news and developments within our great game. 2019 was a big year for Cooper, but things would only heat up in 2020, as he began to name and shame these haters and trolls. Damn it, Bobby, you have absolutely sweet all knowledge about football, you stupid prick. Take your dad's cock out of your mouth and delete your dumbest page. Nobody wants to see your fucking shit opinions about a quilly shit saint killed the players. He also doubled down on his flying the flag for his St. Kilda football club. This was around the time he started to become infamous for blocking people. Sure, he'd been doing it for a while, but he really started to ramp it up around this time. Make fun of him? Blocked. Disagree with him? Blocked. Try to buy his merch? Oh, you better believe you're blocked. Now in that year's final series, his beloved Saners were disposed of by the Richmond Tigers in the semi-final. Now Cooper wasn't going to stand for this. At halftime of the 2020 Grand Final, he was there ready to write his smug over the top post that he does whenever a team he doesn't like loses. Unfortunately, Cooper never got to publish his gloating report of the game, as Dustin Martin put a stop to any possibility of that occurring. Now Cooper was a mature, at the time, 22 year old man. And so he did the right thing, congratulating Richmond on their premiership win. A whole 48 hours after the final siren had gone. But hey, like you said Scoops, better late than never. Now 2021 would be Cooper's most significant year throughout his entire media career. Now, yes, he had a reputation beforehand, but by god, we hadn't even seen his final form. Now by this point, Scoops had kept himself anonymous, but eventually, people began to figure out who he was in real life, which is bound to happen when you're an anonymous public figure. Eventually, Coops got annoyed with this, and so he decided to get on top of it and do a face reveal. But as we know, Scoops does things big, and he wasn't going to do just any face reveal. He was going to do an 18 minute interview hosted by notable respecter of women and minorities, Tom Morris. But today, you're going to find out the real man behind the computer. Here he is. Cooper, welcome. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? Now, we didn't know it at the time, but this would be the moment that changed the trajectory of Cooper's online presence forever. Because it would be this moment, this very incident, that was set into motion the chain of events which would give us perhaps one of the most infamous AFL podcasts in history. Kick it to Scoops. And so, we were blessed with one of the greatest intro videos in YouTube history. Yes, yeah, Scoops, come on, mate. Let's keep going. Now, when his podcast started, Coops had a presentable setup. He had an interesting lineup for his podcast, including his patented segment, Scoops Goes Bang. Now, let's move on to that world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang! Ah, oh, volcano! The volcano Cane Corns is about to get banged on. He had a feature where people could come on, join in on the podcast, and have their comments appear on the show. You want to be part of the show? Kick it to Scoops? Send through your questions through the Facebook link, which I'll attach every show on the post. Howard, it's Bateman, Patrick Bateman. You're my lawyer, so I think you should know I've killed a lot of people. And, uh, Paul Allen. I killed Paul Allen with an axe in the face. His body is dissolving in a bathtub in Hell's Kitchen. I guess I've killed maybe 20 people. Maybe 40. Uh, <laughs> I just had to kill a lot of people. And, um, I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. Ow. 
and he also graced us with some AFL goal recreations. However, this public setup did come with its drawbacks. For instance, it opened himself up to, obviously, very real hecklers. Until next week, everyone, have a great one. And most importantly, hang on a minute. Excuse me, do you mind? I'm trying to film. How are you? Yeah, that's what I thought, mate. Yeah, anyway. No, I tell you what, if you say that again. Yeah, arrest him. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Until next week, everyone. Have a great one. And most importantly, go the Saints! Eventually, due to COVID lockdowns, Scoops would slowly transition into his now iconic setup. Shooting in vertical, on his iPhone, mum's kitchen in the background, and nostrils always in perfect position. And the rest, as they say, is history. Is that just normal round one preparation to, you know, be uncertain, I guess, of how you're going to prepare? Now with great power comes great responsibility. When you're putting yourself out there as a public figure, you have to understand that not everyone will agree with you. You're never going to please everybody, and the best thing you can do is harness criticism and hate as a mechanism to improve your content and grow as a creator. Let your content do the talking, and as long as you know that your stuff slaps, that's all that matters. Now bearing this in mind, our mate Scoops has kind of a spotty track record when it comes to critique and differing opinions. We all have our moments, obviously. Sometimes you can't help it. But doing this all the time only makes the problem worse. If Scoop says some dumb shit on his Facebook and someone calls him out on it, Scoops blocks him and deletes their comment. Now this person will then go to his mates and say, hey, get a load of this prick. And so his mates will go leave their own comments, Scoops blocks them, and the cycle repeats until eventually your reputation is irreparably tainted by an inability to take criticism. Now instead of blocking them, if you were to, say, engage in sensible, civil discussion like any 24-year-old should be capable of, then you're just a guy who, despite having some hot takes, isn't afraid to back himself and his opinions within reason. Which, if you ask me, is a much better image to keep up. Unfortunately, nobody ever explained this to Scoops. If we're talking about Saints supporting content creators, then I'd argue Scoops should take a page out of the book of Saints TV. He's a respected news channel for the Saint Kilda fans, and he seems to have a pretty good relationship with the Saints. He makes his own graphics for team lineups and such. He's a pretty good example of what Scoops should be. Prior to Round 8, Mr. TV published his original graphic showing the ins and outs for the clash with Melbourne. Now the Zupa Dupa Scooper took exception to Ben Long being included in the side, and so he made his opinion known with a simple tweet stating, Long in is ridiculous. Now Saints TV happened to disagree. He wrote back saying, nah, we need physicality, and he's been solid the last few weeks. Now, my lovely viewers, I'm gonna give you a little quiz. How do you think our hero responded to this challenge of discourse? Did he respond with, A. Well chum, you make some good points. Perhaps Long would be a good addition after all. Did he answer with, B. Well chum, you make some good points but I think other players can serve that purpose better. Or did he answer with C? Well chum, you make some good points. I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. Go to Saints. Now if you answered A, or B, or C, you'd be incorrect. Because Scoops chose none of these options. Instead, he chose option D, in which he wrote back saying, No, f no, f quit. C come on Scoops, what are you doing man? Now following this 4D chess reply, Mr. TV came in with a reasonable request to tone it down a tad, which Cooper responded to by saying, he came and shit on me, so I'm allowed to reply. I think the main takeaway from all of this is that he really, really hates Ben Long. I'm sure we can come to some sort of agreement. Josh! Josh! Beaten by an infant. What could be more humiliating? What a scoop! Now the journalist's ultimate weapon for gaining relevance and clicks is the exclusive, the ultimate triumph over your colleagues and enemies. You get to flex your journalistic muscles and demonstrate your industry connections and sources. You, and you alone, were able to get this insider information and all the other AFL journalists look like shit compared to you. And AFL journalists are no exception to this all trying to get their piece of the pie, all battling it out in a Lord of the Flies type scenario 
with each AFL journalist trying to get the big scoops, such as Buddy Franklin taking his bins out and Jimmy Bartel's missus going to the Melbourne show with their son. Being the budding journalist that he is, it's natural that Scoops would try to carve out his own exclusives and breaking news for his page. His first exclusive came out on the 12th of June 2018, in which he EXCLUSIVELY revealed that Tom Lynch was going to move to either Collingwood, Hawthorne, or Richmond. Now, full credit to Scoops, he did end up getting this one right, however his next exclusive leads me to believe that Scoops interchanges exclusives and rumours, because when you go through his many exclusives, it often feels like old mate is either pulling it out of his ass or giving us an exclusive equivalent to predicting the sunrise the next morning. Furthermore, there was an infamous example of Scoops getting a story massively wrong and, in my opinion, greatly tarnished his reputation as a journalist. Now Jack Lukosius from the Gold Coast Suns was coming to an end on his contract and he hadn't signed an extension yet. And so, a person from a Facebook group which I'll be talking about later in this video decided to go undercover as a scout for the Gold Coast Suns based in Victoria. No doubt to test the vetting and journalistic standards of our mate Cooper. Well, he didn't have to try very hard because the bloke literally just rocked up into Scoops' DMs on Instagram and Scoops immediately took his word for it and started posting fake news solely because this bloke told him to. Now, eventually, at this guy's direction, Scooper Trooper flew too close to the sun, as he announced that Jack Lukosius was exploring a trade to South Australia. Now unlike his other son's posts, which were just rumours that couldn't be proven or disproven, this Lukosius post was open to scrutiny, which has happened to Scoops in the past. Unfortunately for Cooper, the mighty sons themselves would exclusively reveal that this rumour was absolute nonsense, as Jack would end up extending to 2026. For our undercover agent however, the jig was up. Scoops let him have it via Instagram DMs once he realised he had been stitched up, and Scoops was forced to delete the post and issue a groveling apology for his misdeeds. Seth Rollins, I'm coming for you boy, and I'm coming hard. He was successful in just using his mouth to get the man off. Oh yeah, the macho man's gonna eat your ass! Now I'm sure there's a lot of us who enjoyed some good old fashioned wrestling when they were younger. We spent our Monday nights watching a bunch of oily buff dudes hugging each other and we fully believed that if we didn't say our prayers, take our vitamins and drink our milk, that Hulk Hogan was going to strip down to his canary yellow undies and pretend to beat us up. You know, these were white when I bought them. I was no different when I was a young fella. I liked me some of that wrestling. These days, not so much. I don't watch uh, WWE anymore, but I do follow some of those fit wrestler chicks on Instagram. Uh, some people, however, choose to stick with being a WWE fan for a little while longer, well into their adulthood. Scoops is one of these adults. At 24 years young, he still balls deep into his wrestling fandom. If you go onto Cal Toomey's Twitter, it's basically what a professional footy journalist Twitter should look like. On subject, and not too much nonsense burying what the people actually want to see. However, if you go onto King Cooper's Twitter, you'll get one footy story buried in amongst a bunch of pro wrestling related spam. Mind you, I'm in a glass house throwing stones because my Twitter's not too much better either. While we're on the subject of Twitter, Scoops has a habit of arguing with other fans. Fans who are very young, mind you. Not over anything important, it seems. I've gone through a bunch of his different duels, and I can't work out what they're actually arguing about. It, it's genuinely nauseating. They're just arguing for the sake of arguing. Now, back to Scoops and his love for WWE. His 50th episode celebration is a testament to that. You can see the WWE influence in his videos. A dubious little creature getting up to mischief. This is no good. Oh, the beast is demonic in nature, very icky, no good. When he relaunched his podcast in 2022, he replaced his perfectly good intro video with a convoluted 5 minute long intro that repeats the original intro video like 3 times with copyrighted wrestler music in the background. And I imagine this convolutedly long intro video is absolutely destroying his retention rate for his videos. Especially considering, if you have the patience to sit through his long intro, you'll be greeted with this. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried. However, tragedy would strike Cooper on his 24th birthday. You see, prior to his 24th birthday, Scoops put out a plea to his favourite WWE wrestlers. All he wanted 
was to be acknowledged by his favourite WWE wrestlers for his birthday. He tagged several of the most popular and the most busy wrestlers and eagerly waited for his reply. But there was no reply. Devastated, Scoops graced his viewership with an update. Inspired to try and make it up to Cooper, several people attempted to wish him a happy birthday, only to be blocked by Scoops, who was clearly blinded with rage. It got so bad that even the immortal Hulk Hogan, his spelling, not mine, tried to step in and mediate the situation, as we can see in this DM, which I have exclusively obtained. Hey, brother, let me tell you something, dude. These 24 inch pythons tore up my Saints jersey, brother. Send the Hawkster $100 so Sid Killer Mania can run wild on Sydney, dude. What you gonna do, brother, when Hawkamania asks you for $100? Now, evidently, Scoops never sent Hulk his $100 as St. Kilda Mania did not run wild on Sydney. And as far as Scoops goes, I'm gonna eat his ass. But here's where the whole wrestling angle gets spicy. You see, Poopity Scoopity Coopity Scoops is particularly fond of this bird named Liv Morgan. And all he wants is a cameo from Liv Morgan. What he actually wants her to say in these videos is beyond me. However, Liv has repeatedly failed to fulfill his request much to Scoopy Barker's dismay. Judging by how hard it is for Scoops to get his cameo from Liv, you'd think that she'd be absolutely overflowing with cameo requests, and surely she wouldn't approve of just any cameo. Now over the course of this video, I've repeatedly mentioned a certain Facebook group, promising that we'll talk about them soon. Well, I feel this is a great segue into the Banned From AFL News Trade Rumors and Results Facebook group. You see, the people who Scoops cast off into the Shadow Realm have decided to seek refuge in this Facebook group, despite only having just under a fifth of the engagement of Big Scoops and his 50k followers. The posts in this group often have a higher rate of engagement than that of Scoops' Facebook page. And when this group of the damned saw his plight of rejected cameos, and also after he threatened to get several admins fired from their real life jobs, they decided to start a GoFundMe and order a cameo from Liv Morgan herself, in an effort to raise morale within the group after Coops had cut off their source of exclusives and fishing for women. Now considering how much trouble Coops has had with getting a Liv Morgan cameo, there'd be absolutely no way that this group of misfits would be able to even come close to- Hello the band group, this is WWE Superstar and still SmackDown Women's Champion, Liv Morgan. I hope that Boots stops bullying you all. <laughs> if you thought a deep dive into Scoops and his antics was surreal, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because these people managed to get Scoops' celebrity crush Liv Morgan to talk shit about him after he repeatedly failed to get his own Liv Morgan cameo. And they had her call him Boops. And with that, let's move on to the Banned from AFL News Trade Rumors and Results Facebook group. Now this group was started in late 2020, right around the time that Scoops started to get a reputation for blocking people. Evidently, Scoops had gone on some sort of rampage and he ended up banning the wrong people because these people would come back to bite him in the ass in a big way a couple years down the line. In this humble Facebook group, you'll find updates on Scoops and his recent antics as well as a massive archive of Scoops' crazy history. In fact, this entire video wouldn't be possible without this group and their detective work documenting and archiving the online history of Cooper Gretsch. These people could probably find MH370 if they were given the task. Now this group started to gain traction around early 2022, coinciding with Scoops' relaunch of his podcast, which included removing everything that made it charming and making the intro video six minutes long as Scoops wasn't slowing down and blocking people. The Facebook group grew in numbers until it became so big that Cooper couldn't ignore it any longer. He decided he wasn't going to stand for it. And so, he joined the group with a very long post denouncing the group and its members, ending it with a Stop before I stop myself. And apparently his mum also joined the group as some kind of covert sting operation, but it didn't end there. He also attempted to rile up his fan base in a desperate attempt to have the group removed. Unfortunately, these pleas for reinforcements seem to have the opposite effect, with the group actually gaining followers during the time of the posts. He also began pestering admins to boot people for breaking rules. However, this would fall on deaf ears. Now eventually, one of the junior admins, a masochist evidently, made our lord and saviour an admin of this group, which Cooper immediately took advantage of, trying to remove the group altogether. When Coops couldn't do this, he began just removing all of the group members one by one, and he kept this up for over an hour 
before I guess the other admins all got home from work and realized what was happening. And keep in mind, all this time and effort is being put into a group of his detractors. It was this little incident that led to Scoops being booted from the group and instead of taking the hint and moving on to direct his energy elsewhere, Scoops felt it prudent to demand he be let back into this group. Why he wanted to be exposed to all this criticism and hostility when he's shown he's completely incapable of handling such things is lost on me. Now eventually, Scoops would fly too close to the sun, again, when he began to contact the family members of several group admins. He did this despite complaints that Scoops had made regarding group members harassing his family, unsubstantiated claims I might add. He also began contacting the employers of group members and admins to get them fired from their job. I wonder if Cal Toomey or Tom Brown have ever done this to their haters. And this latest stunt would come back to bite Cooper on the ass. You see, at the time, Cooper was doing volunteer work for a local radio station in Geelong, 94.7 The Pulse. Scoops had a spot on the program talking about footy. I gave it a listen one day, and he actually did a reasonable job. Nothing too inoffensive. I'd argue that it was better than his podcast in terms of listenability. Now our mate Hulk Hogan is going to make a return here, as he exclusively revealed that whilst Coops was harassing family members and contacting employers, somebody in the group had connections to The Pulse and informed the head honchos of the radio station of what was happening. And so, Cooper was temporarily stood down, pending an investigation, and his information was removed from the website. New segment, brother! Scoops gets fired! As Cooper's schedule for this week's episode, brother, I'll no longer see his info on the website! Thanks for your message and concern. At this point in time, we are investigating a matter to do with our broadcast guidelines and our codes of conduct and are taking action accordingly. At this point in time, Cooper is not scheduled for any episodes until further notice. Once again, thank you for your message. Eventually, they must have fallen down the rabbit hole of Scoops and his chicanery, because Scoops was eventually fired from the Pulse altogether. The Pulse goes bang and acknowledges Cooper's pig slip, brother. <coughs> <coughs> I hate doing this fucking voice so much. Cooper is back soon. I'm glad. Hell yeah, brother. Hey, Hulk. Again, thanks for your ongoing support. I'm sure we heard this news. Maybe your friend The Undertaker is pulling your leg. At this stage, we have no intention or plans to have Cooper return into the pulse. You're fired! Alright! But despite Cooper engaging in the war on haters, he seems to have finally let them go. And the band group is still alive and well, despite Cooper's best efforts. Our last bachelor likes women who take their clothes off for money. Let's hear it for Scoops. Why do we have to stand here? This is so humiliating. I don't want to delve into Scoops' personal life too much, but his antics regarding women and his dating life have been so public, so outrageous, it would be a disservice to my viewers if I didn't briefly talk about it. Now like any bloke in their 20s, Scoops is on the prowl for a missus, and we've already established that Scoops is not afraid to go against the grain, and so instead of going to Tinder like most blokes his age, he decided he would try and use his already established platform on Facebook under the guise of chatting on his podcast about footy. Now understandably, the general public was pretty mean to Coops, forcing Scoops to drop this habit altogether. But hey, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, I guess. Scoops would eventually move to several Victorian dating groups on Facebook in an attempt to snag his princess. It's going about as well as you'd expect. Scoops, from one bachelor to another, I wish you the best in your quest for a saint-supporting maiden. But please, tread lightly in your approach to women, because as I've touched on earlier, you seem to have a habit of flying too close to the sun. Allegedly, anyway. FBI, open up! Again, I feel bad talking about this, but it's a key part of Scoops' online reputation, so I'm going to chat about it briefly. During his online career, Scoops has been accused of some unsavory behavior when it comes to women, and his online activity doesn't exactly help his case in that department. Despite that, I still want to make this perfectly clear for both legal reasons and ethical reasons. Scoops has never been charged with a crime. Scoops has never been convicted of a crime. A lot of the allegations don't have any substantial evidence, or the evidence is really just poor quality. Some have even been faked, apparently. 
and none of the allegations have enough evidence to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. That being said, I'd like to run through some of them very quickly. Scoops has been accused of many things, including, but not limited to, inappropriate messages and behaviour with women of varying ages, as well as some more serious allegations, such as asking underage girls for nudes. Now, a lot of these allegations are pretty unsubstantiated. However, there is one case I would like to briefly mention because it's just so bizarre. Now, a 16-year-old girl on Twitter came out with a video of some DMs she'd had with Scoops with very horrible video quality, I might add, to the point where the messages are almost unreadable. Anyway, changing the filter, we can see a video of DMs with Cooper in which Cooper asks her to send something naughty right after she says her age, 16. She then clicks back onto his profile to apparently confirm that it's his real account. Now, yes, DM screenshots can be very easily faked, however, a video on a different screen, in real time, that's very hard to fake. At first glance, it looks pretty bad for Scoops. However, I'd like to take a moment to bring up some points in his defense. Like I said before, the video is awful quality and she ended up deleting her Twitter shortly after she made these DMs public. I understand she's 16, but she's botched the exposing of Scoops she was trying to accomplish. Real DMs are otherwise. Furthermore, another member of the band group posing as a talent scout was able to get some DMs from Cooper's side with this same person, which appeared to paint a much different picture, almost as if this girl was trying to stitch Cooper up. Now look, plain photos are very easy to fake, and you can fake DMs pretty easily with several free online sites, and unfortunately, Scoops doesn't get the chance to verify that it's her account like she apparently does with Scoops. Additionally, Scoops chose to omit this from his response to the allegations that he released on both Facebook as well as YouTube. His reasoning was kind of odd as well, because having these in his response would be a hell of a lot more compelling and helpful than the response we actually got, which was, uh, bad. You're trying to ruin me because you got blocked? Am I yelling intentionally? Yes, I am. I'm not going to say any more on this topic. I can't draw any conclusions, simply because there isn't enough evidence. With that, let's move on to some much more lighthearted stuff. I haven't won a game, by the way, guys, for over 700 days. So let's see how we go. If that streak will be broken, find out right now. Let's go. Nice car. Perfect. This last segment is just going to cover some random events of note. Now we're going to kick off with the grand final weekend of 2022. I've already touched on my thoughts regarding some of the changes to this year's grand final traditions. However, the footy festival this year was pretty good. A nice way for the young fellas to meet their heroes and such. But when you look at the day itself, it's clear that the day was aimed at children rather than an up and coming journalist. We'll go from there guys. And uh, yes, look at me. Wearing the same gear. Wearing the St Kilda gear. Um, Naturally, his detractors mocked him for this. Look, everybody! Stop slant to a day organized for children! However, Scoops wasn't deterred. He marched into that family day and bagged himself some of the finest exclusives that the Facebook journalism industry has ever seen. He got such interviews as Marcus the Bonk Bontempelli. Yeah. The audio is a touch out of whack, but hey, you can only do so much on a budget. Now whilst he was on this high, fresh off a successful hunt for exclusives, he decided to become Germany in World War II, invading Russia during the winter, as he decided to take on both Kater McDonald and the Shep mates boys. No doubt set off by the latter featuring at the Brownlow this year and Scoops getting snubbed by the head honchos at the Brownlow. Now this beef with these boys went about as well as you'd expect. Scoops? Scoops? Scoopsy? Huh? Scoops? Who's, who's Scoops? Who's Scoops, guys? Who's Scoops? Who's Scoops? <laughs> and on top of that, Mr. MacDonald has completely ignored him, but Scoops wouldn't be down for long, as shortly after this debacle, Scoops would come from out of nowhere like a librarian and reach 50,000 Facebook likes. You did it. Good so job. I can't believe it. I'm proud of you. Now, as the milestone came closer and closer, Scoops was counting down the numbers like a kid counting down to Christmas, insisting that people buy his merch and subscribe to his YouTube channel. However, behind all the gloating, something was off. The detectives of the band group were on the case and they sniffed out some things that were suspicious. 
First off, a massive spike in numbers for a channel or a Facebook page usually coincides with a video popping off or some other event that leads to a big number of new people interacting with the page. This big spike happened during the AFL offseason and most of Scoop's posts during this time were getting pretty subpar engagement when you take into account the growth in likes and the size of his platform to begin with. Furthermore, during his climb to 50k, Scoops was begging for people to subscribe to his YouTube channel. When you see rapid growth on one platform, then you should see some overlap with other things like Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, etc etc. However, during this big growth period, Scoops would only gain 50 subscribers for the entire month of October, compared to gaining around 6,205 likes on Facebook between the 1st and the 21st of October. Now because of all this, people began to get suspicious. Because it all leads to one thing, buying followers. Now again, there isn't any actual concrete evidence that Scoops himself bought likes. In fact, it's been alleged that it's some random guy trying to get Scoops' page shut down for violating TOS. However, Scoops didn't do the best job at denying the allegations. Some idiots is social blade are onto you. This is how dumb you people are. People make fake accounts because they're weak, gutless fucking trolls. You've got nothing better to do than sit in their mother's fucking basement leeching off her wi-fi because you can't afford mobile data and you yelling her saying mom i want this fucking irrelevant fucks who got no life and got nothing better to do but to shit on others who are successful because you are truly jealous that you are irrelevant got lucky off one lame TikTok video. And apparently Social Blade themselves stepped in and attempted to correct his fraudulent follow account. This screenshot may be fake, but coincidentally, Scoops has begun to bleed likes since this all went down. Only time will tell if he can stay above 50k. Now that we're wrapping up, I'd like to make some things very clear. First off, do not harass Cooper and his accounts, do not send him threats, and do not actively attempt to get his Facebook deleted. And very importantly, do not attempt to contact his family, send threats to his family, and don't bother or harass the people of the Lara Cricket Club and the Pulse radio station. These people are completely innocent in this tale, and if you give these people grief, then you are just as bad as you think Scoops is. That said, let's take one final look at Scoops' Facebook page. In terms of controversy, he's starting to settle down a bit. He's keeping his head down and working away by the looks of it. Contrary to what you may believe, I don't want Scoops to shut down or for him to quit doing what he's doing. I truly wish him the best in whatever he chooses to do next with his media career. Say what you want about him, but he's a hell of a lot more entertaining than mainstream media. I mean, you don't see Tom Brown or Cal Toomey running around a footy oval doing goal reenactments, do you? This has been the curious case of Scoops. I'm going to leave it here because this script is already 6,272 words long. So yeah, like, subscribe all that jazz, and uh, ciao.